10 Productions proudly presents the What's in Your Head podcast. Digitized live from the ACT Computer Studios in Cape Coral, Florida, it's the What's in Your Head podcast with your hosts Gordon and Don Abernathy. What's up, what's up, what's up, OG5? It's a Saturday night, rainy as all get out here in the state of Florida because there's about 30 tropical depressions out in the Gulf. I wanted to prevent a replay of what happened three weeks ago. So tonight we went out and got a UPS battery for the secondary computer. So as Very of right good. now, this entire room is on a UPS. The, there's a UPS behind the TV in the living room, but the caveat is, is that power injector we talked so passionately about last week is one of those big clunking things, and there's not enough uh-huh. room on that UPS for it. And so if you guys lose feed due to a power outage, it's not because the studio lost power, it's because I need to get a extension dongle thingy for that also important power injector that apparently if it's unplugged everything goes out so if we go out tonight it's because i just remembered five minutes ago that i got a ups battery from over here but there's nothing on that power injector but i i tried so what is going on with you gordon i say send a little bit of that wet weather our way you can have it man you can have it it's been raining we are as you know are the west is burning down um just think Oregon real quick. I mean, not only has it been the pandemic in 2020 and the riots, now they are predicting mass casualties in the state of Oregon due to firefight, forest fires, wildland fires. That's a bad way to go, too. What's next? Nuclear war, an asteroid, and Yellowstone going off? I, it's insane. I don't even <laughs> want to think about it. It's, it. The whole thing is just crazy. 2020 is... <laughs> It's such a pain in the ass. And since we're on I, the- I saw a good meme. I actually oh, don't have yeah? to follow too many. Yeah, it was just at 11, was it 11.59, December 31st. Let's all take a shot and never talk about 2020 again. Yep, until it's in our history books for our kids and we're teaching our grandchildren when they're doing their homework. From their computers at home. And our grandkids say, Grandfather, do you remember 2020? And we slowly get up from our rocking chairs and we shuffle into Arms our, are shaking. We shuffle slowly into the bedroom, open up that sock drawer, pull out that bandana, slowly open it up, produce some piece of cloth, and we come back and we say, I was going to wait until you're a little older to give you this. And we hand to them our first face mask that we wore. <laughs> and there's going to be a whole generation of kids who are going to be reenacting 2020. There's going to be people on eBay or the version of eBay 30 years from now buying up face masks from 2020, just like I'm buying up gas masks and shit from 1942. There's going to be a whole collection. So you guys keep those face masks, hand them down to your grandchildren so they can sell them on eBay and make 40, 50 bucks as a historical artifact from 2020, along with whatever nonsense what's up paul harper thanks for coming back fella stock market crashes is my best bet says tj bowen i hope not i don't want to lose any 401k money more than i've lost already you know know. here's a little 2020 story that my daughter will tell (laughs) so um last let's rewind roll back pull tape and roll track to quote cottonmouth kings I think it was last Thursday I took Nugget out of school because she had an orthodontist appointment because she wanted braces because, well, she needs braces. Okay. And so I uh, took her out of school early and took her to the orthodontist, which the week before that I took her out to go to the dentist because she had a cleaning, and that dentist is the one who referred us to the orthodontist. So she's uh, lucky. She's getting some part part weeks in. She's getting some, some time out of school. Yeah, well, she's lucky, and we're lucky in the fact that um, the state of Florida covers her dental insurance, her medical insurance, her therapy insurance, and allegedly future college scholarships. But insurance being insurance, they only cover medically necessary things. Correct. And her braces aren't medically necessary because her teeth aren't twisted, and she just has gaps in her teeth. And so it's strictly um, visual and to help her, you know, her self-esteem and all that. And so mm-hmm. the insurance company doesn't see it as being 
necessary or we can't find an orthodontist in that insurance group here in Southwest Florida. I heard okay. rumor that there may be one in Sarasota, which is like 45 minutes away, but that's going to be two years to drive my kid to orthodontist appointments 45 minutes away each direction every time no she's got to get a tightening and straightening. So long story short, we're out of pocket on the braces. So I took Ouch. her out of school Thursday okay. to go get the orthodontist appointment, and they said, well, we can get you in on Tuesday because Monday's a holiday. So, okay, fine. She woke uh -huh. up Friday, you know, and it was late in the afternoon, so we just took her back home. There's only like an hour worth of school left, no reason to drop her back off. Yeah. Friday morning she woke up, said she had a headache, really wasn't feeling good. And we was like, well, it's a three-day weekend. We'll just take her out of school. She can come back on Tuesday after her. she gets her braces put on. And so I just called the school and said we're doing a follow-up dental appointment. Big lie on my part. And so we did that, and Tuesday uh, – Tuesday comes, we go, and they take the temperature and all that stuff, both of us, and they get her braces and come back, and they give her her excuse, and I take her to school. Then we'll put, the braces got put on at 9.30. It was over by 10. I went and dropped her off at school at 11. 2.30 in the afternoon, they kick her out of school. What? So she's been back on campus for two hours, a little, little more. Apparently, the nurse was at lunch, and... Um, the attendance person was going through attendance and saw that. Now, you're not being facetious by saying she's at lunch. No, but I found out. I'll get to that. Um, okay. Apparently, whoever does attendance discovered that she was gone Friday and didn't have a note. And red flag. So we got red a, flag. We got a red flag this child. We got a phone call stating that it mm -hmm. was a school district's policy that if a child misses a day of school without an absentee, validation certificate from a doctor or a dentist or a carpet cleaner, wherever they may have been, that carpet they have cleaner. to, you know, quarantine for 10 days. Well, two things. One, when you call my better half, who's also a school teacher, and you say this is district policy, but she knows it's not because they're not doing it at their school. Okay. Did you call them out? Yes. I, I basically said, look, if you guys want to say this is your policy, that's fine. Don't blame it on the district because... Surprise, some of your students' teachers work for the district. We know that's not the district policy. So first and foremost, quit kicking the buck down the street. Stand up for your policies and be proud. I have no problem with this. But I do have a problem with the potential and the idea of her being homeschooled by herself for 10 days because at the end of last year, even while my better half was teaching her classes from school, Nugget wasn't doing her work, and it was just a battle every day for the last two and a half months of school. It was just a GD nightmare. So I called the school. And I talked to the nurse, and she said, well, the whole thing's a little, little strange. I was out to lunch, and it is what it is. She didn't say this, but she made it sound as if she was saying, you know, if I was, if I was here, that wouldn't have happened. I said, well, what do you need? Do you need me to go sit in line for six hours and get a COVID test? Or do you need her to go to a doctor and get an all clear, saying she's sound as a pound, healthy as a horse, and all that good stuff? She said, just get a doctor's appointment. So I called the doctor. Now, this was on Tuesday. Okay. Because of the doctor and all that. And the type of work they do, they're mad busy. They're super packed. You can't get an opening. The nearest opening was Thursday at their office in Fort Myers over at Health Park, which is like a 20-minute drive. Okay, fine. Give me the appointment. So she had to be home from school for two days. Now, as we said last week, we didn't know if we are going to have a podcast this weekend because I was supposed to be in North Carolina for a World War II event. It's a Surprise! 11, it's an 11 and a half hour drive, so I was going to leave on Thursday around uh -huh. 6 in the morning, get there at 6 o'clock at night, 7. Actually, that's a lie. It's an 11 half-hour drive. That doesn't include gas stops, food, PP breaks, and all that stuff. So chances are it would have been a 12, 13-hour drive, push come to right. shove. And so I wouldn't have gotten there until 8 o'clock at night, even if I left at 6 in the morning, got all my tent and gear set up. And now, appointment's at 9.30. Now I'm really pushing it. I haven't quite called it off yet, but I had a good idea that that trip was canceled. So whatever. It is what it is. Kid comes first. Head over across town, go over the river, down Palm Tree mm -hmm. Avenue, past Grandmother's house we go. Get there, 10, 15 rolls around. Point was at 9.30. They finally take us back. Cool. Doctor, they do all the initial stuff, weighing, heart rate, testing this and that. Doctor comes in. So what's going on? Tell her, beep, beep, beep. Doctor's looking at us. Beep, beep. Still talking. I finally said, is that the fire alarm? Yeah. Are we supposed to be leaving? 
As soon as I said that, the nurse comes in. Everybody has to evacuate the building. Fantastic. So we all get up. This just got better. Get in the elevator. Yeah. Get, no, actually, we're on the first floor, so we didn't have to take the stairs or the elevator. Go out in the parking lot. We're standing out there for 15, 20 minutes. The doctor, nice enough, she comes up says, hey, I really don't know how long this is going to take before they clear us to get back in the building. If you can give me their fax number, I will fax over the, the note and get her back in the school. Fantastic. Call up the walkover, call, get on Google, call up the school. Yeah, blah, 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 middle school. Yeah, I need to get your fax number. Yeah, it's do 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 Okay, thanks. I said to her, yeah, we're actually at the doctor's now. They had a fire drill. She said, yeah, the students are coming back in now. I'm like, huh? I said, you guys are having a fire drill right now? She's like, yes. I said, I, I'm at a doctor's office whose fire alarm just went off. We're out in the parking lot. So just so happened, as we were standing in the parking lot in Fort Myers at the doctor's office, her school had a smoke alarm or fire drill. But They're all the out in the chances. goddamn parking lot. What so, are the chances? So I get the fax number, and I go give it to the doctor. She said, thanks. And so as we're leaving, they start filtering back in. So we head over, and I, we decided to go get some lunch because we hadn't had breakfast yet. And the 930 appointment, by the time we got out of there, it was like 1130. Okay. So we go and have lunch, and I call the school. Yeah, I need to see if you guys got the um, excuse to, nope, don't see anything on the fax machine. Oh, crap. I did get the phone number through confusion while standing in the parking lot. That, what Can you please verify the fax number? So they give it to me. Okay, thanks. Call the doctor's office. But it's a super busy doctor's office. So now I'm waiting on hold for 15, 20 minutes, driving down the street. Finally pick up. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Fire alarm, fax the number. But can I verify that you guys wrote, that I gave you the right number while standing out in the parking lot because they said they still didn't get the fax. Sure. Get in the fax and okay, we'll, we'll send that right over. Wait 15 minutes. At this point, I'm back at home. Call it the school. Yeah, just seeing if you got the, the uh, excuse, the, the letter from the, on the fax. Our internet's down right now. Yeah, well, the, okay. Well, most sure. places don't use analog fax. A lot of places use well, the yeah, fax to email my, stuff. Yeah, it brings me to my next thing. So for some reason, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's HIPAA law. Because everything is exchanged, you can view everything electronically. But it seems like a lot of medical shit gets faxed. And but they're not. What year is it? But they're not. When, why are we using 1996 technology? Well, yeah, I get that. But it's not like they're transferring. They're faxing like medical reports. They're just faxing. Hey, she was here. She's good to let her back in school, kind of well, thing. My thing is, is in the in the world of email, I don't ever fucking check a fax machine, and I'm sure most other people do too. It just kind of sits there. Well, I, I can tell you in this: with I paper that gets printed because it's all in the same thing, and, and everything else. You know. Well, I can tell you this because I do computer work for some medical places, and I know a lot of them actually do um, data transmission through dial-up modem still, because it's not a constant on connection. Hackers aren't going to spend time trying to intercept dial-up modems that are running for two and a half minutes once every three weeks opposed to an instant online connection. How many hackers are sitting around thinking, hey, let's go try to intercept dial-up modem connections? It's just so, that we have, we have battled this fax problem with mm -hmm. medical on various things. and It almost seems like any time a fax is going to be sent, shit's getting fucked up. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be seen in a timely manner, uh, so on and so forth. So let's review. Reading. <laughs> Kicked out of school for not having to notice. Uh -huh. Cancel my trip. Go to the doctor. Fire alarm at both places. Don't get the facts because the internet is out of is down. Which, by the way, um, three quarters of the students are learning from home. I get a text later. The generic Lee County School District uh, fax saying that the um, their CenturyLink is having problems. So now you got a bunch of kids learning from home that have no connection with their teachers in the, in the district network. And uh, long story short, she stayed home that day. And then later in the afternoon, we got the all clear, and she went back to school on Wednesday. But Now, like, are they going all five days, or are they rotating on and off? You know, I'm out the here, Clark County. No. No kids are going to school. It's all distance learning. My nephew, who is a kindergartner this year, mm -hmm. is not the most attentive, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or you know, there's struggles, right? Mm -hmm. They're finding that these kids who are learning distantly can't focus. 
Um, well, I meant to get into this because, as we said, my better half's a teacher. Um, first and foremost, I was listening to Adam Kroll's podcast last week, and they totally just skipped over it. They played an audio clip someone recorded during a uh, Zoom meeting from the L.A. Mm -hmm. County City Council, and they said their students weren't going back to school until after the election's done. Not first of October, not second semester, but they said, I don't know what the election has to do with your kids going back to school, but that's awfully telling about where the L.A. County School District is sitting. Now, what do they mean by done? Is it election day or when the results come back? I don't know. Verified and validated. That's my question. Why would you use <laughs> that as your marker? Why wouldn't you say, well, second semester or, you know, however they go, you know, fifth quarter, you know, however they did it. Hey, do you want to not sound overly political in an overly political time? Yeah, don't Different say where days. kids aren't going back until the election is uh, done. Sometime in December. But well, anyhow, the answer, the, the answer to your question here is um, mm -hmm. the students had three choices. They can go back to school mm -hmm. where they have distance, social distancing, which I can tell you is not six feet in the classroom. It's more like two and a half because of lack of space. Um, but that's neither here nor there. They could do uh, distance learning. Where just like at the end of last year, but now they have more of a curriculum. Last year it was kind of just thrown together. Now they actually have oh, a curriculum yeah. in place, and a lot of students after three weeks into it are wanting to come back to school because they discovered it's not the it's not the fun time they had last year. But here's the crazy thing that I never knew, which is kind of cool. Apparently Lee County has always had a virtual learning system in place for homeschooled kids. Mm -hmm. So instead of parents trying to go online and find curriculum, you can just sign up it's for built. Lee County's virtual learning. And basically do online classes that way. The teachers had a choice. You could either come to school and do the face-to-face -face learning, do the distance learning, which you had to do at school. So it wasn't, hey, you're going to sit at home in your living room and do this. You still got to come to school and still have the same exposure. And the virtual learning. Now, what's the difference from the teacher between the two and the students? If your student opted to do the virtual learning instead of the distance learning, they are no longer technically a student at that school. They're just now a student from the Lee County District, which then frees up spots and allows students to get in that school because we have school choice. Okay. So now if you wanted to go to, let's just say, mm -hmm. Cape High School and you couldn't get in because there was no more room, but now you know, 50 to 100 kids chose virtual learning, now 100 spots opened up, and now your kid can go to that school. If you do the distance learning, you're still a student of that school. And the same thing for the teacher. If you decide to do virtual teaching instead of the distance teaching, you are no longer technically a teacher at that school. You're just a teacher in the Lee County School District. And where that comes into play is um, ever since um, our governor got rid of um, tenure here, it's always whenever a school loses a unit, basically meaning um, they don't have enough students to fulfill a class, it's always mm -hmm. last hired is the first to be fired. And so if you've been a teacher at this school for five years and then all of a sudden now you decide to become the virtual teacher, you now lose your place. So if next year... The, You're going to the back of the line. Next year, if the distance stuff and the schools yeah. open back up, now you don't have a guaranteed place at the school you were previously at. Now you're basically just like a new hire. So it's weird that some of the teachers would have chose that. But, yeah, those are the three options they're taking this year. And um, I can tell you right now, every week more and more students are coming back because, well, one, <laughs> like we learned last Thursday, the whole damn Internet goes down. Two, a lot of these kids are at home with spotty internet. Their parents can't afford, you know, fast internet. They may be getting 25 megs on a good day, having, you know, subpar equipment. So they may be getting 5, 10 megs. I've heard there's been plenty of times where kids, just, their Zooms won't stay connected, their internet. And so a lot more of these kids are coming back to school. So what they're doing out here is, and I don't know how they're pulling this off. Maybe it's shifting of funds because there's always screamed that Clark County is one of the brokest school districts in the country per student. Every student has a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. And they got them all hooked up and, and, and logging in. But, yeah, I hear it. it's a nightmare. And I think, <clears throat> how would I have done? Oh, oh I would terrible. have done horribly. It, I, it was, I couldn't even get my homework done. Wow. You know? I, I, I passed tests. I never paid attention in class. And I never did my homework. Which I can't even do her homework. Daddy. She asked me to do her math homework the other day. I'm like, I don't know. How do you, how do you add a positive 17 to a negative? Se I don't know. It's just, it's like, I can't do this shit. Your fourth, your, your seventh grade math was way above. Well, I'm, I can't do math anyhow, but that's, 
But no, they do the same thing. They give them Chromebooks, and if you're underprivileged, they actually give you a hotspot. Can you imagine trying to do a, a Zoom meeting on a Verizon hotspot connection? They are actually putting bu- hotspots on buses, school buses, and running buses to locations to help pick up. And just parking them? Uh, parking them out in just front of burning like, diesel fuel. I, I, I don't know how it's working, and I don't know the whole deal. You know, and it's funny because you'll still see the uh, – speed limit signs toggled on at the schools and mm-hmm. they say you have to obey them even though the schools are not in session because we have Tax children revenue. picking up their food yep so they're still feeding them which mm-hmm. makes me wonder where's the parents and why can't they well i called you on thursday after we were leaving a cl- uh, i was leaving a client and there's a place i won't name the name of them because it's the charity and they're doing good things but it's about that it's about feeding school kids but their tagline is, who's going to feed the kids on the weekend? Uh, their parents? But I guess there's a lot more shitty parents out there than we ever thought. So it's, well, it's just like, you know, birth control is too expensive. Well, a kid's even more expensive. So maybe you should abstain. And I get it. We were all young yeah, and, and hormones and run through us and, and whatnot. But, yeah, it's just insane. I wanted you to think, think real, back real quick. <clears throat> think back to the river. Think down to... Back to Boone County, mm-hmm. Big Bone, mm-hmm. Rau Road. Mm-hmm. What is the most common image that comes up in your mind? Besides the river flooding? Just what? Just like a memory that you hold on to. It could be a very random thing, but it's, it's one of the things that's always, when you think of the river, that's the first thing that pops up. When um, our grandmother sold the property to a um, friend of our cousins who we kind of grew up with, um, I wanted to go down there because the one thing that has the most sentimental value to me of that property is in front of the trailer and in front of the picnic table about 30 to 40 yards away was a telephone pole. And yes. Johnny and I would hang our targets on there, shoot BB guns at them all day long. And that entire front face is just so riddled and pocked away full of years and years and years of BB guns, pellet guns, and everything else just torn away. And I wanted to I was thinking about a while back when I am just trying to get a close-up picture of just the, the face of that telephone pole and all the wood that's chipped away with the BB still stuck in there. And just, I mean, I was like, what, 10 years of just shooting at that damn pole all day long with BBs and pellets? That's interesting. No, that's a good thought. You know what mine is? The outhouse? No, not the outhouse. It would be waking up in the morning, laying in bed, and just listening to the boats and the jet skis on the river. Yeah. That is my most common thought. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing fantastic. It was just calming to me. Yeah. I thought it was always calming. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it, it was nice. There's five acres down on the river, no one around. But yeah, the barges were nice, and then the um, the the paddle the paddle boats, the Queen Mary. So one, t- so one time, Ed rest his soul came down with Terry Sinek. We went to watch a concert in Cincinnati and. After the concert, we decided to go down the river. I don't think Ed had ever seen a barge in his life. Yeah. And he's like, oh, my God, what's that? And he was so just enthralled with these barges and the concepts of barges. That's how our coal and iron used to be. (laughs) And goods and services used to be shipped up and down the river before we had interstates. The railway of the river. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I always thought that was kind of a, a cool thing that, not a lot of people necessarily see, less than you would, you yeah. would think. And, you know, and that's you one know. of the things that when the interstate was designed during World War II for fast deployment of troops, if we ever got invaded in a land war, that's one of the things that got affected were all those river towns that relied heavily off that boat traffic, the ports and all that stuff. And so yeah. when semi-truck and shipping became available... Now the importance was cities that had direct interstate access. When I first moved to Cape Coral, I asked a customer who's still a customer of mine who does commercial real estate. I'm like, why do we not have warehouses and manufacturing in Cape Coral? Simple, he said, no direct route to the interstate. To get to Cape Coral from the interstate, you either had to drive over a two-lane thoroughfare bridge into Fort Myers. There's four of them. You can't take a semi on that. Or you had to drive down Burnt Store Road which was hard to, you know, obviously they do for gas and things like that. But when you have, you know, trailers full of heavy items that like from manufacturing and stuff, it just wasn't cost effective at the time to, to do all that. 
And so, yeah, the infrastructure would be just too expensive. And that's why all the few warehouses and manufacturing we do have was in Fort Myers. <clears throat> but, Very yeah. good. Very good. So I was in the hot tub, got to use the spa for the first time in months mm-hmm. um, because it's been, you know, like the surface of the sun out here, record heat, record dry. But we actually got out there and Katina was telling me a story uh, about something that happened to her cousin and, and uh, it got me thinking and it's just something that's been on my mind lately. And when somebody tells me a story and this is just how I am and I come to find out, I thought everybody was like this, but maybe not. I literally visualize, I'll put myself there. Now, I don't know what the house looks like, so I visualize my office, you know. Hey, the smoke alarm went off. You know, he went and got all these sentimental things and barely made it out of the house before half of it was burned down. So when I hear a story, it doesn't matter what it is. I always put myself in the situation I always visualize. Even abstract thought and everything else, I, it's everything's visual mm-hmm. and, and pretty vivid for me. It comes to find out that there are people out there they can't visualize at all. Really? Yeah, it's called uh, antiphasia. Antiphasia. You know, that kind of doesn't surprise me. Um, and I can't wrap my head around that, that at all. Well, you know? I can't wrap my head around the idea either, but I know it exists because there have been plenty of times where, um, as we all know, necessity is the mother of invention. And there's been plenty of times I needed something created around the house, out in the garage, at a friend's place. Mm-hmm. And someone will present, especially with like what I do with the computer, you know, running wire, mounting stuff on walls and all that. And you, uh, you're presented with a problem, and I engineer it in my head and come up with it and try to explain it to people. And they just, they can't visualize it themselves, and they don't think it'll work until I produce it. And then they're surprised because I didn't draw it out on paper. And I'm like, and, you know, and I've told some people, you just don't, you don't have the ability to visualize things, to see see the final product without actually seeing it in front of you. And so I know it's out there. And, and what's interesting, and I've kind of gone down a rabbit hole a little bit on this. Um, there's one gentleman who thinks you can train each direction, but he had, it's called uh, phasia is regular visualizing, but it's kind of vague. The images are vague. They're maybe just kind of like outlines. It's in the center of your head. Then you got hyperphasia. Which I feel that I may lean more towards. It's very detailed drawings. Something, and I don't need to close my eyes to see it. It's just there. Right? Yeah. Sometimes it feels like it overtakes my vision. And I've done that a couple of times driving and it scared the crap out mm-hmm. of me. Which could be more of a protophasia, what this guy is, has termed himself. And it's interesting. And, and he says, and this is again his deal. And I'm sure he's selling something that uh, you know he could teach people to do the various varieties of the phasia. But I just thought it was... Very interesting. They're like, yeah, you ask them, when you hear the word chair, do you picture a chair? And they're like, no, I just know there's a chair. And I, and, and I don't, God, that just, it, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I can't imagine not seeing it. It's just a separate way of thinking. But no, I'm the same way. Kind of like two weeks ago when you're talking a story about um, narcissistic Ned having the, the shroud from the garage door opener at the shooting range fall on his head. I was picturing the, the track and the whole mm-hmm. thing. and. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. I visualize everything through as well, and um, you know, just especially when it comes like my work and all that, just coming up with ways of well, I got to get this wire from point A to point B, but in between there's this problem. How do I get around it? Before you visualize. get up there and start cutting holes and and effing stuff up, you gotta you gotta not only run it through, but then you have to have the foresight to imagine the failure. Well, why wouldn't this work? Okay, yeah, I can say, well, we'll go here, we'll cut a hole here and run there, but then, well, what would happen if that didn't work? What's the potential of that not working, and should we go another route? Which just came in handy for me last week, because I had to run a bunch of Cat 6 wires from a server room to a front cabinet, and it had mm-hmm. four columns, and my initial thought was, those columns are decorative, we'll just go down. Turns out this place was built in 1974, and those were load-bearing columns, and it wasn't hollow drywall, it was actually... The support beams just wrapped in drywall, so there was no hollow space to get through there. So I had to, and luckily I figured all that out through visualization before I start trying to cut, drill, poke, and prod. And, you know, I, I was able to prevent making a huge mess and having to repair a bunch of stuff because I didn't think things through. And using, like you're saying, visualization, I was able to come up with a better, um, not really a better route, but a the only real secondary route to do it. 
And what's interesting about load bearing columns and even maybe headers, especially headers, is you've got to be careful where you drill if you go through them. You got to be careful of the size and, and everything else, or you 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 uh, you know you uh, compromise the the structural well, you know, the structural deal on it. So uh, no, I just thought it was very interesting, um, you know, and 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 from what I under and I've talked to people, and I'm beginning to think. Uh, it's starting to see some things are coming to light with me after, after reading about this and some of the conversations I've had with friends and loved ones. You know, are you guys so able to hear us? The only reason I ask is because Jackie on the YouTube live stream says she only has one post and just says, can't, can't get it to come on. So I have no idea what she's talking about. No one else has said the, usually you guys really get saying, Hey, the audio's not coming through or it kind of sounds like shit, which we haven't had that problem in a long time. But and so Correct. it's just a little out of context. Can't get and I'm trying to visualize is she referring to to, what? to a conversation <laughs> we're having? But yeah, she's saying she can't get it to come on. And since I slowed this down, um, I want to start a new thing this week. TJ Bowen, congratulations! You are the Facebook live stream member of the week. Send us a private message, and we will send you one of those fancy "What's in Your Head" podcast stickers, like Gordon has over his shoulder, and that he has on his car that I gotta put on my car. Um, yeah, you want a sticker, so. PM us your address and we will and what color you want and I will personally make one up for you and print it out and uh, this will be something that we do every week we'll choose one person from the chat room on Facebook and YouTube uh, and then hook you guys up as a thank you for joining us on our live feed. So are is there? A, it sounds like you may have some weather headed your way, huh? Yeah, we're just supposed it's supposed to be rain events, but basically there's a <laughs> they call it a fish storm because it's just going out and staying out in the Atlantic. But yeah, there's some tropical depressions out there just blowing rain and wind all over the all over the GD place, and so that's going on. I think um, we need to acknowledge the fact that yesterday was 9/11. Yes, and it's the 19th anniversary. Now, I'm going to be careful when I say this. I was a little surprised seeing how next year's the 20th anniversary about the amount of coverage this year not that not that there shouldn't be any but compared to what i remember last year i don't remember that much attention on it last year and you would think the 20th anniversary would be the one that we go whole hog on but maybe we do need it because of how with the opinions of the police but that wasn't why i wanted to bring it up i i was more interested in um as much as it sucks to do so just kind of where were you at? Do you remember? I mean, this is our generation's Pearl Harbor. Where were you at? I mean, when I interviewed I these ninety, actually, when I interview these ninety five, ninety seven year old mm -hmm. World War II vets, my first question is: Is where were you on Pearl Harbor? And we go from there. So this is our generation's Pearl Harbor. I was living with a friend. I was getting ready to go uh, put some applications in for a job, and that came on, and I decided I heard it. Basically, I got into my car. It was that Volkswagen Fox I had. Uh, backed out, AM station was on. First time I ever heard this guy named Glenn Beck. Didn't know <laughs> who he was, where he came from, and uh, and then the news feed. Was this he pre was crazy Glenn Beck? It. it was pre yes, it was pre Chicken Little Glenn Beck. Yeah. Um, so back when he I've was listenable. I've listened to him a little bit lately. I think he's kind of backed down some of that, but I, I try not to. I just uh, yeah. Anyway, went in. Watch the uh, watch the TV. I saw the second plane hit, and that was it, man. It was crazy. I, d I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to feel, except how hor horrible um, that it was. And then, and this is going to sound awful, but when you saw the people jumping out, there a song started to play in my head. Let the bodies hit the floor. Oh, it was Jesus. fucking horrible. Horrible. I don't know that why. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why he the did it again. Was there, I don't even like that. Hurt someone's feelings. But Yet he didn't want to do it. I yes, think it was troublesome people in, are often people in trouble. They may be mentally ill. Find out how you can help. No, right, better mental health. Box three thousand, New York one, New York. But yeah, it's I think it's, it is because maybe it was just in the background so much, like on a lot of X game stuff. Well, and that song was at its pinnacle then because it was a few short years later that he ironically passed away himself yeah but it was, it was horrifying you know and that was it man that's where i was how about you i was uh building ambulances which 
interestingly enough, I think six months to a year prior to 9-11, we lost a New York contract to one of our competitors because we were just too busy and we couldn't get out the trucks in a manner in which they felt was appropriate. But with that being said, we had a lot of guys who've been working there 20 years. And whenever these fire districts would buy an ambulance, usually um, a fire chief and the person in charge of the EMS would fly out to the location to do the final inspection. So we had a lot of our, our long timers, and especially in management and in the inspection office, who knew a lot of these New York captains and fire chiefs and EMS inspectors and all that. So I was actually building an Anne Arundel Fire Department ambulance listening to Howard Stern. And um, they came on and they said, a plane just hit the Twin, t- uh, the twin Towers. You and I think probably thought of Cessna, right? I was going to say, everybody kind of thought the same. Oh, Cessna. Some, you know, some tourist was flying around, taking photos, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I remember at the time, he had a guy named Crazy Cabby who was their nighttime DJ over there at K-Rock. And, and he just happened to be out in the street. And then Gary came on and said, another plane hit. And that's when we were like, holy shit. Um, and Crazy Cabby was out. I'm, I, and Howard used to go off at 12 every day. I was his, in his shift. I think they stayed on the air until like 3 o'clock that day. And um, But sign of the times, um, I saw the second tower fall on a 13-inch black and white TV at the mm. front security desk. So, I mean, 2001 for us who lived it didn't seem that long ago. But technology-wise, the fact that there was still a 13-inch black and white TV in play out in the world being used on a daily basis as part of the security guards. Because I their their station was by the restroom, so I went up there to use the restroom. I went over and I saw it fall on there. And obviously we didn't go home. Actually, it it was a little more cranked up. Not so much that day, the following day and the day following. Um, I think I... I'm going to lower my quotes because I don't know the exact numbers so long ago, and I don't want to get them wrong. I think somewhere between like six to nine of the ambulances that got destroyed were ones that we had built in the past. And then there were some that weren't destroyed that just had broken windows and had damage. And so we were going around, well, we, not me, but the guys in the parts department and the engineers and all that were going, basically building care packages, putting windows in there and replacing switches, some lights and all that and shipping up there. And then sending some of our guys up there to try to repair some of the, of the quality ones. And for those of you who didn't live in the Midwest, um, there was a phenomenon that went on like the following week. The rescue workers were working 24-hour shifts. And there were people in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, even Kentucky, construction workers, um, people who were out of work. They were driving up there, waiting in line on the interstate, volunteering, saying, hey, if you need to. Basically, they're going up there to lend their services if needed to go in there and pick up the breed and let some of the first responders take, you know, have a break at it. And um, I know there's a couple of guys at the plant who were talking about going up there and doing all that. And then um, as things – and here's the crazy thing is our dad was working in corporate back then. He traveled a lot. When I was in high school, they sent him to Germany. he has been to France. So it was very common for him to be flying all around the country. Mm-hmm. And that morning, right after the towers fell, I got a phone call at work. Don Abernathy, you have a call on line whatever. My heart sank. Because Dad was living in Texas at the time. You were in Montana. No, in I was Vegas, actually, where the fuck uh, you were. No, I was in Columbus, Ohio. Were you? I oh, yeah. That, that, Ohio, yeah because, south side of town. Yes, because... Uh, By for, Hamilton. For a short period of time, we, you and I were going mountain biking when, back when I was married. Yep. And um, but Dad was in Texas at the time, wasn't he? He was in California yet. I don't yes, think. he was. He was in Texas. Well, yeah, he was in Texas, and he was still traveling a lot. So I instantly thought, "What Uh-oh. the fuck?" And went and answered the phone. Being twenty at the time, I was out of touch with the rest of my family. Turns out, our sister had just had our nephew. And that floored me. I The first thing I thought was, oh, my God, she's probably a mess over what world did she just bring that child into? So our, our sister, our nephew was literally born probably two hours, three hours after the yep. tower fell. Now, for some of those who believe in reincarnation, I don't know. Now, that's the thing, too. Kids can be fucking mean. Oh, and they have been. And him growing up, having his birthday, not a September 11th birthday, but literally being born on 9-11, he got this shit fucking 
handed to him all through middle, elementary school, middle school by little asshole kids just for being born. They've called him, oh, you're a Satan spawn. I mean, the worst things in the world they called our nephew because he was born that morning. So he'd been dealing with that shit, well, 19 and years And he's turned out pretty damn good. Yes. He, uh, it's fantastic to see how strong that guy is. But as things progressed, because so many of those trucks got destroyed, we got the contract back from our competitor because they were not fulfilling their daily time. And so we went from building trucks for everybody else to building a shit ton of New York trucks. And mm -hmm. one of the things that pisses me off and I regret so much from when I moved down here, when I first moved to Florida, I moved around a lot. And somewhere in one of my houses, ex-girlfriend I lived in, I had a Craftsman four drawer toolbox mm -hmm. that had the whenever they're uh we printed up our own stickers the decals for the side of the, the squads yeah. out of 3m tape and if they had scratches or any blemishes you couldn't put them you're not going to sell a hundred and twenty thousand dollar ambulance with a scratch on the goddamn decal and so we would get the stickers i had the new york fire department uh, ambulance seal on my toolbox and um the logo, the Ammons company, a few other things, stickers. That toolbox got stolen. It's long gone. I wish I still had that damn thing. Um, that got left at an ex-girlfriend's house somewhere. That's that's the one thing I really wish I had of all this. Paintball gun, whatever. I can't find the bindings of my snowboard, whatever. That toolbox, I really wish I had that damn thing because of this, the stickers on there. And, you know, I have the in white, you know, the New York Fire Department fucking door logo on the side of that toolbox. And but uh, yeah, we started rebuilding New York trucks, and then um, right around that time is shortly after that's when I uh, got divorced and ended up moving to California. But yeah, it was and so when I moved to California is when we started gearing up to go into war and all that stuff. But yeah, that's 9/11. I remember I came home, my ex-wife she wasn't my ex-wife yet. Like spent all our ink printing up you to you you uh, you Yahoo at paper articles and all this stuff. Instead of going and buying newspapers, she's Running through ink, printing up stories and all that stuff. So Far more expensive that way. What the fuck are you going to do with that? There's not going to be any value to your printer copy of these stories. But anyhow, so, as we know, with the, that you know, probably the most devastating event that's happened in our country, and all those poor lives lost, and all those heroes. The, the cool um, thing was, there was about a two week period yes, where everybody was patriotic, and it brought everybody together. Everybody had little American flags flying on their windows. And it was super cool. But this is America. Early on technology. Internet was still new. But we were starting to get that habit of a short attention span. That was the year of, like, LimeWire. And... Kazaa. Kazaa. No, I think it was originally called Morpheus before it was LimeWire. It was Morpheus. Absolutely. But... So for about two weeks, there was American flags, and in week three, all those American flags were laying out in the street because people would forget they had them rolled on their windows, and they'd fly off, and they wouldn't turn around and pick them up. So that was, that was quite sad to see. What would it take to bring our country back together like that? <sighs> don't, or, I don't can, or can it. it happen? I don't want. You know, I I talked to not a World War II vet, but a uh, Gulf War vet, mm -hmm. and as much as I, I don't even want to answer that question, but he said that that is the great reset war yep which we're still in one resulting from that and it really hasn't we're more divided now but i don't know yeah and that's uh whoo yeah there's god there's a lot going on <laughs> yeah. i don't even uh, i've yeah. had some interesting conversations this week uh with some acquaintances and some co-workers and and you got to say one thing, your opinion, and, and they'll be like, well, you know, for example, and this guy I have ultimate respect for. Uh, I look up to him. I admire him. But, you know, I, I talk about, well, you know, why can't people just comply? And his answer was, well, would the Patriots at the Tea Party comply? And it kind of threw me for a second. And But, you know, I had to think about, well, no, you're. I don't know what store you get go to to find a brush that fucking broad, yeah. to paint that big of a broad stroke, and how the hell you're going to lift it up? That's two different things. Yeah, we're you know it, what's going on now is nowhere near what was going on then. No, that was getting ta taxed without representation at the count at the 
government level for the colonies, your colonists, and it was to help pay for a war. And not even <laughs> it wasn't even just the taxes. It was all, hey, the red coats are here. They want to take my house. Get the fuck out. And oh, by the way, your wife's staying, and so are your daughters. I mean, it's it so was much- more than just taxation. It was just a slew of nonsense. Versus somebody doing questionably criminal acts and not complying. That's two different things. And, and Comply. Let the courts sort it out. If it, you're truly innocent, you, for and, the most, yeah, there, there's your, your one-off deals, but it'll be figured out. And, you know? and the funny thing is, is like we learned last week when it comes to Antifa, a lot of these cats aren't downtrodden. You just had like six of them arrested. They were from fucking families out of New York who were like members of yacht clubs and had two or three houses. They were fucking rich kids. I mean, so you can't even claim that you're downtrodden and you're trying to fight for a purpose. You're just wanting to go fuck shit up. So is that ju- is that where we're at with rebelling with parents now is joining Antifa because your parents are probably a uh, capitalist <laughs> and well off? Well, it's just a more violent version of what happened in the 60s, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, let's think about it. The hippies. Who were their parents? World War II vets. Correct. Their, their parents were the, the people who freed the world. They all Their fathers, their uncles, if they were able-bodied, they all served some way, shape, or form. The entire country was, you know, for the most part, had some sort of military training. They all basically had that discipline. And so what's the best way to act out against parents who were all about high and tight haircuts? Grow that Throw shit out. out, man. Free at last, free at last. Grow and then that so down to your ass. <laughs> and so what happened to the kids of the hippies? They swung back the other direction. They came nineteen eighties yuppies. They started wearing mm-hmm. the hush puppies with the nice cut and the polo pop shirts. Pop collars. You and, gotta have the pop collar. And the sweaters, and they became, you know, Ronald Reagan Republicans, man. So it all it's just constantly whatever your parents' generation are, the kids gotta go the other way. And since I'm these a, kids are the children of more of your generation, a little bit older than you, the, the Generation Z, which these kids are so dumb they call us boomers. No, that's our fucking parents, you dipshits. You can't yeah, get you that know, fucking right. Yeah, you know, Gen X is like totally lost in the conversation. Yeah. Of course, we were so apathetic as teenagers and young adults, we didn't really care anyway. Well, you know, if you want to call me a boomer, that just goes to show how fucking you're so uneducated that you don't even know your own put downs and memes, dipshit. That'd be like me calling my dad, okay, greatest generation guy. <laughs> no. But anyhow, it just repeats. And so Yeah, you, exactly, son. You just said it. Greatest yeah. generation guy. But <laughs> my dad's not a generation. He's a no. baby boomer. His parents are He's from the greatest generation. Exactly. But exactly. Yeah, so uh nice. Jackie did reply, said, Yes, bearded man, this is I. But she didn't reply what she was saying. I just can't get it on. I can't get it to come on. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> My original question is, I, you said, I can't get it to come on. I questioned Jackie, question mark. And he said, yes, it is I. Anyhow, I <laughs> spent way too much time on that. But what I was just asking <laughs> what you couldn't get to come on. But that, but anyhow, um, here's something interesting for you. All right. Um, we're not quite in the news yet, but this is a little article I came across. United Airlines sued for packing NFL charters with young blonde crew members. In 2020, we just got over the Me Too movement. Oh, we didn't even get over it yet. It just got put on the back burner. How out of touch are you? United like- Airlines Holding Inc. packs its charter flights for sports teams with young blonde crew and bars older flights attendants from working the plum routes according to new lawsuit. Was there a writer somewhere? Um, <laughs> what do you mean? Such oh, you're talking about a writer like like a rock yes, band writer. Yes, like we require <laughs> blonde bombshells on our on our flights for our our athletes. In doing so, airline bases the values of workers entirely quote entirely on their racial and physical attributes and stereotypical notions of sexual allure. According to two veteran flight attendants who sued, there you go. <laughs> the the old the older flight attendants who were quote put out the pasture soon because the young younger chicks are getting all the good flights. Ethel, I'm sorry to tell you. But you've exceeded your shelf life. I know you keep trying to get put back on the shelf, but it's you're done. Not even Ethel. The attendant, a black woman who has worked for the airline for 28 years and a Jewish woman who's been with them for 34 years, say that they both tried repeatedly and unsuccessfully to get assigned to work on the charter flights. In a statement released last Saturday, United highlighted its track record on diversity and inclusion. Quote, 
While we cannot c comment on the ongoing litigation, the flight attendants included in our sports team charter program are largely representative of our overall flight attendants population in regards to age and race, the company said. Importantly, the flight attendants allegedly... Uh, I'm sorry, el eligibility to work charter flights is based solely on performance and attendance and has nothing to do with age, race, and or gender. United has contracts that provide air travel for some three dozen teams in the National Football League, Major League Baseball, and National Collegiate Athletic Association. No hockey. Interesting. It According is interesting. to the lawsuit... Now let's back up there a little bit on that, conversa that, mm -hmm. that, that comment. Based on performance and attendance. Now... I'm, I'm taking a little bit of an exception to that because I would think the middle-aged ladies would probably be more attentive and, and on point and there on time. There's probably truth to that, but I think the loophole they're trying to jump through is to say that these younger cats don't have children and husbands, and thus, therefore, their availability is better because they don't have to take off work due to sick kids, uh, school meetings, and things like that. Not They're saying not that that's true. I'm just planes. saying that's my assumption on why they would bring that up. And it is a, it's a good assumption. Yeah, and they could probably say, you know, push comes to, hey, a lot of these flights are turn and burns. The younger attendants have the ability to, I don't know, stay more awake. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just making shit up. But according, uh, let's see, United's contracts, we already read all that. Sharon Tesler and Kim uh, Gilroy say they were both told by supervisors that they were unable to get work on the charters because they, quote, weren't on preferred list that were based on team preferences according to the complaint. So, yeah, it does sound like they have a writer. So, they, so they're all standing in line at this high-end nightclub, right? All the blondes get in. They're the, the flight attendants on the airlines. And then the middle-aged uh, ladies, sorry, just... The, line, the, the rope gets pulled right in front of them. They said so, later they discovered that the, quote, young white blonde attendants with less seniorities were given the better assignments. Yeah, I can see. Uh, United said. Some shit being stirred up. United said that the average age of flight attendants and sport teams charters is 46 years old, and the average tenure of such attendees exceed 19 years, and that is the high higher percentage of African-Americans in the sports team charter program than is overall flight attendance population. So they're saying that they're 46 and older and that true to, truth be told, there's actually more African-Americans in the charter program than there is in the overall flight attendance program. So it'll be interesting to see where that shakes out. The women are asking for monetary, including punitive damages. The case is Gilroy versus United Airlines, Inc., CO. 0389 Superior Court, California, County of San Mateo. Fat tips. Yeah. And the alcohol and the beer and the pretzels. I, well, I doubt they even get tips. They're charter flights, so that's probably all inclusive. It's not like the, you know, one, they don't accept cash in the air. Well, then it's going to be that all inclusive tip that the whole crew gets, right? Yep. They get split amongst. Good. And you know that, that goes on. Um, Gordon, when you think Cape Coral, what do you think? I think long drives. I think palm trees. You think cheap cars? I think a lot of really small, cheap three-letter cars. No more. The what? The cheap cars will be here, but we will no longer be inundated with the huge guys commercials. Interestingly enough, huge guys from uh, up north. Huge? Huge guys up from up north, and I know some people who used to live in that area saying he was a shyster. Um, as yeah. we learned when my dad returned his lease after my stepmom died, and they found out that he wasn't going to lease another one, they charged him $500, but that's neither here nor there. Where uh, is that in writing? Facilita apparently in the lease agreement that when you end your lease, if you do not lease another Kia, there is a $500 fee because now they have to prep the car to go to auction and a bunch of bullshit, which most well, people do anyhow. Well, Facilita Kia and Cape Coral Port Charlotte have both been sold for $36 million. The huge era of Billy Facilla selling cars in Cape Coral is appearing to be ending. And I couldn't be happier for that. While it's going to be huge. While the Kia car dealership will remain at 404 Northeast Pine Island Road, Facilla's name and branding would end as part of the sale, which is in the works. The same would be hold true for Facilla Kia of Port Charlotte. But apparently, I know they have one in Tampa too, but apparently that's not in the deal. Uh, which is, yeah. Go ahead. Did they say who they sold to? According to the documents filed with the uh, Securities and Exchange Commissions and confirmed the potential buyer. Um, the $36 million deal would include both dealerships, which would become owned by 
plantation-based LMP automotive hold, holdings. Uh, it must be Plantation, hmm. Florida. Um, yeah, LMP automotive holdings. I have no idea who that is. I don't either. I was wondering if it's going to be like a, a, a one of the nationwide chains, like a Finley or something. Yeah, or or uh, Amazon. Um, was it Carvana? <laughs> Sam Tofka, CEO of LMP Motors, said that he was hoping to close the deal in December. He said that he has not yet met Facilla and was not familiar with his branding. I have a feeling that's a lie. Facilla established his name and brand in Cape Coral in December 2011. His fast became organized throughout Southwest Florida with his frequent TV, radio, and mailer flyer campaigns. I do know when he came down here, the same uh, real estate guy that was telling me about the uh, lack of businesses here said that he came down here with a $4 million advertising campaign. Holy crap. He did give away a house or two. <laughs> and he, one of his big scans was is he made all his money by leasing. So when you go down there, they would try to talk him to lease. He leased more cars than he ever sold. And his thing was you lease a car, you get the, everybody come back on one day and you shoot a half court basket and you get the car for free. And every lease you get a free a free <laughs> cruise, but it wasn't free. It was just at the end of your, your lease deal. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 2011, he fast became recognized throughout Southwest Florida for his frequent TV and radio mail flyers of huge. He launched a dealership with an open air con, uh, concert with the classic rock band Sticks, and he included annual giveaways, cruises along with his car sales. The facility last visited Cape Cod dealership in 2019 of October, has not appeared in any more TV commercials, rumors that he has run into health problems and has not been able to confirm or deny his family or his company has numerous calls. Yada yada yada. So good. So you're saying that Cape Kia may be coming to an end? Well, the Kia will be there, but I doubt that this LMP Holdings will have the revenue stream to not only maintain the level of oversaturation, but the I'm sure no one can meet the level of obnoxiousness of which those ads were. I mean, they were just god awful. You mean I, they were more obnoxious than a Fred Reichert commercial? Let me, let me just say, I he would send in stuff that sound like, because I worked in radio, he would send in stuff to production that sounds like it was recorded and just a, it was on a cell phone. The recording was horrible. Uh, early in his career, when he'd come in and record at the station, he would just throw the engineer a handful of cash. So that should cover it and just walk out. I mean, it was just, it was just nutty. This guy is just a fucking nut. But oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Crazy. Do, 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 do. Have you ever uh, drove down the street and seen uh, one of your town colleagues with a low tire? Let's say, yeah. What's your I first have. instinct? I really want to flag them down. Mm -hmm. Say, hey man, just to let you know, in mm -hmm. case you're unaware, you got a you got a low tire back there, and I'd hate to see you on the side of the road. Usually, when you do do that, they say, I know, and you act like you're fucking annoying them, or they look at you like you're insane. They keep your window rolled up. Have Fuck you. you. <laughs> well, uh, this happened to me several occasions where I say, okay, this guy has two cars ahead of me. I should be able to catch him at the next light. And you start to take off, and he starts driving like an asshole. And you're like, nah, fuck that guy. <laughs> he yep. starts cutting people off, and no, nope, you're on your own, dude. Get a flat tire. So you're right. All right. That happens so much. Mm. But while we're on the topic, if you're in a utility trailer, please check your damn tires. I cannot tell you how many utility trailers I've seen with tires blown out because People rotate their car tires, but they never think of that utility trailer that has hundreds and hundreds of pounds packed on it every day, whether it's three lawn mowers, a stack of cinder blocks, whatever. They just never check those tires. You can get them at Walmart for 40 bucks, including the rim, but no, you always see them blown out, throwing rubber at you as you're driving down the street. It's like, come on. Speaking of shit. utility trailers, it made me have a thought that I was thinking about earlier in the week when I'm taking the freeway on the way to work. Uh, usually you see... A variety of stuff when people don't secure their load on the roads, correct? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes it'll be ladders. I've seen buckets of electrical, you know, string. You ever wonder how that ladder flies out on the interstate? Oh, I know how it flies out on the interstate, but how's that? Um, not being strapped down. Is it because they swerve too much? No, it, some it could be a little bit of both. It happened uh, wind to me. Can catch it. Yep. That's what it is. A big gust of wind just grabs that first step and pulls that yep. son of a bitch right up and out. Well, lately, what I've noticed here in at least Las Vegas land is a lot of couches and chairs 
coming out of vehicles because people are fucking moving right now. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of influx. I'm seeing loaded down cars coming in from Cali. I'm sure the, uh, the um, fires are not helping the situation there. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to God, they don't bring their ideology with them that has ruined their state. They will. These type people go to Burger uh, King, ask for a Big Mac and demand one. And yeah, but uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of recliners and couches and do people go back to pick them up? Nope. And because public service announcement. Trucking. I don't care how poor you are. If you see a mattress laying on the side of the road, leave it there. Do you really want crabs? You don't know where that couch is. But that, not the couch is one thing, but the mattresses. Don't ever pick up a roadside mattress. That's just gross. And what's so funny is so we have bulk days here once yep. a month. Free. Doesn't cost you any money. The only thing you got to do is wrap your mattress in a, in a mattress bag. You can throw your couch out there. I've cut up a bed and put it out there. Not a problem, but people still dump their trash in empty lots. Like, dude, they take this shit. Why are you now obviously unaware what your your garbage um, guy actually does and provides for you? So you're actually you're you're taking more energy to dump it illegally somewhere than just hauling it out to the curb or to the big dumpster if you live in a apartment complex well here in cape coral you you get free bulk pickup the caveat is you have to call it in now to be fair to my fellow cape coralians when you go to the website of the trash pickup company it says to simply throw it out on the curb and they'll take care of it which they do not so i called the trash company and i said hey i am informed i understand that whenever i do bulk pickup i got to call you guys and schedule it and I have actually walked up and down the street giving the addresses to all my other neighbors who aren't aware of this. I'm tired of seeing their shit laying out for four or five weeks. And I said, what's the deal? And I said, I can't help but notice on your website, it has a generic statement of saying, leave it out on the curb, we'll take care of it. To which she put me on hold. And came back and said, sir, your city is the only city Of all the cities in the South that we manage that didn't agree to the contract for automatic free bulk pickup. They're so cheap. She didn't say this part. She didn't say this part. I I connected the dots. Cape Coral so cheap that they went with the lesser plan where it's still free but not automatic. So you actually have to take your time, call it in. But the... But the, the 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 population pays for the trash, not the city of Cape Coral, correct? But we don't sign contracts. Actually, no. It's in, it's in our it's. I don't get a bill from the mail. I don't get a trash bill. I think it's just built in uh, our taxes. So I'm not actually no. You don't pay out of pocket per se. It's part of our taxes. Yeah, we pay out of pocket. But there's no no education program, and because they have a single website for 48 different townships, that's why it's, and we're the only ones, that's why when you go to their website, it doesn't say in red parentheses with the exception of Cape Coral, Florida, it just says put the shit on the curb. Except for the fuckers in Cape Coral. Yeah. So if you live in Cape Coral and you want to know why when you put the dresser out in front that it never gets picked up until your neighbor breaks down and calls it in, you got to call the phone number and they'll pick it up. Speaking of the bulk trash, this is the last thing on it. Um, my in-laws, there's a they got a neighbor across the street that just bought the house, so they they went to replace the water softener. Well, there's a couple of things that the bulk pickup will not pick up. Hot Anything tubs. that has motors or refrigerant in it. No, that's when you call Import Export Steve's. Um, what is it? The Import Export Steve Semi Precious Metal Extraction Team. There you go. And this thing has been sitting out there for five months. It seems like. On the curb, and I'm like, how did this not bother the people who live in this house? A very nice house that they bought. Just having this thing on the... What the fuck's wrong with people? But, yeah. So now you're making the hot neighborhood look like a ghetto. And they will pick up the hot garbage. tubs here. You just have to cut them in pieces. Oh, will they? Huh. It's 2020. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Unemployment's at an all-time high. There's riots and looting in the street. Properties being burnt down cars being destroyed you don't know if you're gonna be able to pay your rent your car payment concerned how you're going to take care of your family where can you get some money 
That's where we come in over at Import Export Steve's Semi-Precious Metal Extraction Company. That's right. You may not be aware, but you are surrounded by semi-precious metals. So in this time of strife, when you're worried about paying your bills, give us a call and we will come out and extract your semi-precious metals for 40 cents on the dollar. Unable to make your mortgage? About ready to move out? Leave it all behind? First, give us a call and allow us to come send our experts over to extract all that precious copper from your walls. We will give you 40 cents a dollar in a market rate. Simply give Import Export Steve Semi Precious Metal Extraction Group a call at 239 232 4419. Can't make that card payment? About to have it repossessed? Simply give Import Export Steve Semi Precious Metal Extraction Group a call at 239 232 4419. And we will come extract that semi precious metal out of that catalytic converter for 40 cents on the dollar of the current market value. Simply give Import Export Steve Semi Precious Metal Extraction Group a call at 239 232 4419. This episode of the What's in Your Head podcast is brought to you by our friends at At Computers. At Computers has been providing IT solutions for all of Southwest Florida since 2004. So if you live here in Southwest Florida and need your computer repaired, your laptop repaired, um, TVs mounted on your wall, whatever technical stuff, give them a call 239 283 1120. If you own a commercial business and you need your uh, domain taken care of, you need your computers maintained, online backups, antivirus protection, two form authentication, give them a call 239 283 1120. And if you live out of the state, you can still get help from Mac Computers by giving them a call at 239-283-1120, and they will log in your computer remotely and help you with all of your computer problems. Give them a call or go to act-capecoral.com. And while you're on the Internet, head over to d-410.com. You can click on the merch links and get all our shirts, like the one I'm wearing right now with the Second Amendment written on it. I still got to get that sticker link up. I'm going to get that done tomorrow. Like I said, TJ Bowen, send us a private message with your information. You are the OG5 listener of the week. We're going to send you out a What's in Your Head podcast sticker. And, um, yep, sign up for Patreon, too, while you're there. Click on the Patreon link. It is a dollar a month, and uh, that goes to help support the show. I have access to the OG5 podcast, which Gordon and I have got to get another one up here soon. Um, get quicker access to our YouTube videos. And if you sign up for the $7.50 a month plan, after two months, you get a free T-shirt and um, all that good stuff. So thank you guys for all that. And while you're also there, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. I just posted up two new videos in the last two days. And so that's all that housekeeping. Gordon, are you ready for the news? Bring on the news and shit. shit. News and shit. shit. Now, now here's, here's Gordon, Gordon with some news and shit. shit. Ooh, echoey. Joining us now from the Digital 410 West News Desk in Las Vegas, Nevada... Gordon Abernathy. Gordon, how are you doing tonight, fellow? I'm doing all right, but uh, I don't know, man. So what are what is one th- thing ladies are known for? Spending Especially all day in the bathroom, better. not knowing what they want to eat. Moms. Nah, PMS. how about complaining? Speaking of PMS, Bailey just had her first period, and I had to fashion a diaper out of T-shirts to keep her from bleeding all over my house. But that's another story for another time. Get your female dogs fixed, ladies and gentlemen, because it's a bloody fucking mess. Well, they're known for complaining, too, right? Complaining is kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'm being just Would you say nagging? Or nagging. <laughs> so a prump man, yes, prump, the famous prump area that we've seen in Nine County on Live PD, has been sentenced to 18 years to life for killing his mother for complaining. Yeah, she had it coming. She enticed me. So this prompt man who was sentenced to the, the – that has this large sentence, and after he and his brother stabbed and bludgeoned their mother to death. Do you Boy, know the man. difference between stabbing and a bludgeoning? Bludgeoning is usually like beat with a baseball bat. Yeah, a blunt object. Blunt object. It's in the blood. Anyway, Michael Wilson, 19, was sentenced – and he's 19, so this guy's life's over yep. before it even starts – was sentenced uh, after the July 2018 killing of his mother, De- Debbie Lebig. Uh, Wilson will be eligible for parole after about 18 years. So he'll spend basically his life in prison up to this point. People are dumb. Uh, yeah, they are. District Attorney Chris Ariba said because Wilson was 17, the younger brother, at the time of the murder, he was not eligible for a life sentence without parole under Nevada law. Ariba said, given the limitations of the law, his offices believes what he had was a just outcome. Um, according to Ariba, this was a truly heinous crime. 
And we hope that this sentence helps with the closure process and pays respect to the memory of Miss Liebig. Wilson and Dakota Slover, Salavar, Salavidar, I can't say it fast enough, admitted to stabbing and ble- bludgeoning their mother with a hammer Ugh. before buying her, burying her in a shallow grave. Uh, I understand the shallow graves out here because the damn soil so hard. Uh, according to the arrest report, Salvador admitted that he and, and Michael Wilson, so they look like they're half-brothers at this point, okay. murdered Dawn because uh, they couldn't take her complaining and justified by saying that she wanted to be with her deceased sister. Well, she complained a lot, and she really wanted to be with her dead sister until we killed her. What's going on, Johnny Gomez? He's asking uh, on Facebook Live, what's going on me? I'm just working and hanging out and doing podcasts, fella. So there is a nice uh, next story, uh, kind of a, a, a Vegas, uh, Florida connection, which seems to be a lot of lately. And that is the second most popular tag I'm seeing in Vegas now behind California. Seems to be Florida. Uh, two have been sentenced to a federal prison after selling... This stuff marketed as potpourri, mm-hmm. known as bath salts, spice. They're still on in that racket. Well, this is this is going back to 2012. This is how long this case has taken. Two men were sentenced to 20 years in federal prison for a synthetic cannabinoid spice manufacturing scheme run out of a Las Vegas warehouse in 2012. The U.S. District's Attorney Office said. In a release on Thursday, the pair had made about $1.6, $1.61 million selling 4,000 pounds of the product in Nevada, smoke shops, and across the United States. That shit's so dumb. You used to be able to get that at all the gas stations out here. Well, on July 3rd, 2019, Charles Burton Ritchie, 49, of Park City, Utah, and Benjamin Galecki, 46, of Pensacola, Florida, were convicted on 24 counts, including wire fraud, money laundering, mail fraud, amongst the other substance distribution charges. According to the evidence presented in court, Richie and Galecki created smokable spice made with the dangerous chemicals and marketed uh, the products as potpourri, yeah. incense, or aromatherapy, according to the release. Yeah, it's nuts. So uh, these guys, and we've isn't this what's kind of caused some of the, the zombie type attacks and people trying to chew on people? Was it a spice thing or was that something else? Oh, no, that was bath salts. Bath salts. Yeah, that's back when uh, the guy in Tampa bit off the face of uh, someone else. You know, I just logged on to Periscope and I'm talking to somebody here. And I got to say, if you're on Periscope, um, the quality, the video quality is garbage. We look like we're on a VHS tape. So head over to YouTube or Facebook and find us because uh, that's more of an HD. I don't know why, but yeah, the uh, Periscope quality is just garbage. So what's the biggest, scariest creature in Florida? Well, clearly it's the um, lot lizards. <laughs> no, I mean, well, I think most people would say in nature, I'll, you're close. I know most people would say the alligators, but I mean... I don't see those as much as the damn wolf spiders and the brown recluse. Well, in Polk County, Florida, they had a 911 call about an alligator in a storage shed. Officer gets there, (laughs) checks it out, and it was a discarded pool floaty. That was a high value. This wasn't like some green cartoon. This thing was like brown printed. It was very realistic. Have you seen this I saw. I saw the news story. It's... It wasn't like that the Wally Gator looking green alligator you had back in nineteen ninety three. This thing was this thing is like really realistic looking. So records show that a woman called nine one one at around one fifty PM on August twenty fourth, saying that her husband was retrieving boxes from a storage shed outside their Winter Haven apartment when he spotted what he thought was an actual gator and asked his wife to call for help. Feet don't uh, film it now. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh fuck. Uh, you know, the Periscope's so, so her, bad that you can't read the phone number at the bottom. It's all blurry. Yeah, her husband went to the storage garage, and that's where the alli- uh, and there was an alligator locked in there. She couldn't provide an exact size for the animal. He says it's big. About six. He foot. says it's big, according to the nine one one call. Huge. And 
She noted that the storage shed was located near the complex's pool. Pictures posted on Polk County Sheriff's Office Twitter account shows Master Deputy Mark Trexler posing with the inflatable apex predator, one hand pinching his snout and the other, of course, gripping the handle yeah. that's on his neck. Yeah, was, I saw this pretty pretty crazy looking. I uh, I set up a TikTok last week of a probably a four and a half foot iguana out behind the at computer shop last week. Got some big ones back there. Pretty crazy. Well, one of Vegas is Vegas has got a, a new celebrity resident. Who's that? One Polly Shore now has bought a home in Rancho Circle, uh, which is interesting because it's just surrounded by impoverished neighborhood uh, here in Vegas. So, uh, you know, one of the reasons things they asked is what brought them here. And uh, in a typical kind of wheeze fashion, you can hear. And, and I actually watched his. Uh, did you ever watch his special on Showtime or something? No, I heard about it, but I never got around to watching it. Pretty, it was pretty good. Um, but he was in Maui, Maui for the quarantine. And while he was hiking, it just hit him. Yeah, People. let's move to Vegas. So and that was it. Well, I mean, he he's he was not only born and raised in L.A., but his mom was no she was a the queen of the comedy world. Yes, Mitzi Shore. Yeah, so I mean that took a lot for him to leave, especially concerning he still has property there. Well, he's pretty stoked. I I know this. Uh, I've been in this neighborhood. I've worked on some uh, high end homes in there. Uh, it, it is, according to him, on the same street where Dean Martin once lived. And, and all the other guys. Uh, he felt fortunate to get out of L.A. with the coronavirus thing. Mm -hmm. I hear you. And he's kind of sequestered here. Sounds like he's going to be starting a one-man show in Vegas. Uh, obviously, that got put on hold um, because there's no stages. And uh, something that he's going to work on. So, Polly Shore's in town. He's going to do a one-man show eventually, uh, I think. And uh, here we go. Um, so... He's been down here a few times doing some comedy at our local comedy club, which, speaking of which, I was uh, listening to the comedy channel on XM Satellite, and the comedian was talking about the worst place he ever played was Naples, Florida, which I know the club he's talking about. He did like a five-minute routine on how horrible it was to play Naples. Is that the same club that... Yes. There was a... Yep. Yeah, the comedian that got... Yep, same one. Well, oh, wow. Well, actually, that's on Marco... Actually, no, yes. It, it, it was originally a market they moved to Naples, but yeah, that's the same one. It's the uh, seafood restaurant and, and comedy club. Come eat some fish and watch some jokes. Hey, I, you know, jokes. you can make fun, but he he definitely gets the big name comedians down here. Well, no, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. But and that is all I really have for the news today. Thank you so much for that. And uh, one thing we like to do, which we haven't got a whole lot of um, interaction on, is send us an email. We want to hear from you. Give us an email at info at d-410.com. Uh, let us know what you think. If you have any questions, comments, tell us to fuck off, whatever you want. Uh, hit us up and let us know what's going on in your life. We'd love to hear from you. And um, thank you guys so much. Gordon, where can people find you? Uh, I can be found at Aegis1974 on Instagram, Gordon at D410 on Facebook, and Abernathy.Gordon on Twitter. Or simply head over to D-410.com and click on the link that says social. And thank you guys for continuing to listen to us each week. Our numbers are up, and I appreciate that. Please share us with a friend. Uh, the best way to get word out is, yes, we can pay Facebook $10 to share our post with 20 people. Or you guys can tell your friends, you know, how you like podcasts, listen to these guys, they're local or they're out of Vegas, whatever, wherever you're living. And uh, just share us with your friends and uh, let, them, let them know, the, give, us a, give us a listen and uh, all that fun stuff. But thank you guys for your support. And remember, if you never get out of your comfort zone, you will never get out of bed. So get up, challenge yourself, and you'll be surprised in what you can achieve. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>